Hey guys, this is Vaishak Pillai and welcome to Embedded In. So in this part, what we are going to do is we are going to set up an MQTT broker using AWS IoT Core and get our simulator, the script that we wrote in part 1, connected to the AWS IoT instance. For this, you will need an AWS IoT account. If you do not have one, I highly recommend that you sign up for the free trial, which is 12 months of access to almost all the services that is required to learn about AWS without having to spend any money. So we go to the browser and go to aws.amazon.com and sign into the console. It is never recommended to sign in directly as the root user and explore AWS. But in this case, I want to show something very specific uh, and some of the capabilities. So in this series, I will be signing in as a root user, but do not do this at home. You always have to create a user account with limited privileges, a different IAM account. And that is what you should be using for your work. Once you sign in, you can search for IoT. And there are multiple IoT services listed here. You can go to IoT Core, which is what we will be using in this case. Once you are at the AWS IoT Management Console, go to Manage and click on Things. So what we are going to do here is create a device, attach some certificates and policies to it, and then use our simulator to connect to the AWS IoT instance. This is again just for experimentation and getting to know the concept behind all this. When we take devices to production, there is going to be an entirely different flow. So now click on create. And you can click on create a single thing. We need to give a unique name to the device. And this is going to be the thing ID as well. So I'll call this as light one. I'm not going to assign a type or a group to this thing. I'm just going to the next step where there are options to create certificates. So this certificate is different from the CA certificate we used in the last part. This is the device certificate, which is part of the mutual authentication TLS flow that is required for the device to prove its identity to the AWS IoT cloud when it gets connected. This way, only devices with valid certificates that you issue or are issued by parties that you trust will be able to connect to your instance of AWS IoT and you don't have to hard code usernames and passwords into your device in production. In production, you're not going to go and create certificate for every device like this, but this is for experimentation and to getting to know the concept. Click on create certificate. And this will generate a certificate, a public key and a private key pair, which can be used for your device. You need to download all the certificate and the keys at this stage itself because you will not be able to access the private key once you leave the screen. So click on download and save the files to your working directory. And once you have downloaded the certificate and the key pair, click on activate. This is what tells AWS IoT that the certificate that is going to come in with this particular key pair is in fact valid and is authenticated to connect to our device backend. The next thing to do is to attach a thing policy. A policy is nothing but a set of rules which can be assigned to a particular certificate. What we are going to do here is Telling AWS IoT that when a device connects with this particular certificate, these are the set of things which it is allowed to do in AWS IoT. Device policies by itself is a complex topic, but for now, we have a very simple test policy which lets the device do anything and everything it wants in the backend. That is why it says IoT star and resources star and everything is allowed, star being the wild card. This is never recommended in production, but for test, I'm going to assign this policy. If you do not have a policy at this stage, you can just create one and I'm going to register the thing. I have this thing called light one created here. 
Now we go to the WRS console where we had installed the MQTT clients. The certificates that we just downloaded are available here. What is missing is the CA certificate and of course the host name. To get the host name, you can just go to settings and download the endpoint name. This is the unique endpoint which can be used for your devices to connect to this instance of AWS IoT. Every account will have a unique endpoint name. The other thing that is missing is the CA certificate. So you can just search for CA certificates for server authentication in Google for AWS IoT. In fact, I can show you that. We will search for the string AWS IoT and it takes you to the documentation page that we were just in. If you scroll down, you will see that there are multiple certificates available with which you can authenticate the AWS IoT instances. We are going to download the RSA 2048-bit key and save it in the same working folder. This is a PEM key, that is why you are seeing the ASCII strings here. We can have a dedicated discussion about certificates and keys and structures later on. Now that we have the host name and the certificate that is required to connect, we can go and frame the command that is required to connect to the AWS IoT instance. So we'll use mosquito client. Let's do a publish first. Let's do mosquito pub. Host is, I just have to go back and copy the host name again. This is the host. Port is 3883. Now AWS IoT allows you to connect only over secure channels, but MQTT is not the only channel with which you can connect. We can also use HTTP, but that is not very practical for an embedded system. There are also web socket based connections. For now, it's the secure port. What you also need to know is that some networks will be blocking the port 3 for which we have an ALPN based mechanism to first connect over 443 and then upgrade the connection to connect over 3 for MQTT. But this is more of an advanced topic that we can touch upon later. So back to the console, we have the port, we have the host. Now we need a topic. We'll just give a dummy topic as test and a message since we are publishing. Hello. Now we need to provide the CA file that we did in the last session. It is going to be the Amazon root CA. What we did not do last time was authenticate the client to the server when we connect, which is mandatory in the case of AWS IoT and a certificate based authentication is the only mechanism to do that at this stage. So yeah, I missed a extra hyphen here. I'm going to say that the cert is E0 certificate and the key is E0 key, the private key in fact. Public key is part of the certificate so we don't have to explicitly mention that. And I'm going to give the debug flag. Great. We are able to connect, get a connection acknowledgement and we were able to publish a message. In case we did not give the certificate and the key for authentication, we would have failed a connection. It says a TLS error occurred because when the client tries to connect, the server will ask for a certificate with which the client can prove its authenticity. When the client fails to do so, the server will just disconnect the client. That is what happened here. To see whether the messages that we are publishing is in fact reaching the AWS IoT console, we can use the web-based tester that is available in AWS IoT. For that, go to the console and click on test. It will take you to the MQTT test client. We can subscribe to the same test topic that we were publishing to. Click on subscribe topic. And we go back and using your console, publish a message again. This time we can see the hello that we published from there has reached AWS IoT. 
Same way, we can subscribe to the topic using the certificate as a credential and publish a message from the test console and it will reach back to the device. I hope with this, you got an understanding of how AWS IoT can be considered or visualized just as another MQTT broker. But in this case, it's a massively scalable MQTT broker, which has a lot of bells and whistles and also a lot of knobs that we can tweak and tune.